G'day guys, I'm Ben Cossey from Australia and I invite you to tune in to season two of Grip Sport Latino. It's going to be radical. Hasta luego. Welcome, Tammy. I am so happy to see you here in another episode of Grip Sport Latino. How are you today, tonight? Uh, I'm doing good. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Uh, I opened up my garage. I'm in my garage. We call this the dojo. <laughs> so, so that's that's um, where you like... where you work out, right? Yeah, primarily just our home garage. Yeah, it was pretty hot in here though. It's like a convection oven in here. Um, okay, it's like south facing, and uh, today it got up to like I don't ninety six degrees here. So by the evening, it's always hot. <laughs> Oh, so, here yeah. in Chile, it's, it's the opposite. It's pretty cold. Actually, okay. there there were some like some floods in the south of Chile, so it has been really complicated yeah. for some people. Here in my city, no big deal, but but yeah, we had some rain last weekend. Yes, completely different, huh? We have you know fires out here and floods where you are from snow. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Exactly. Well, Tammy. As your personal introduction, I would love to know, well, you are from the U.S., I know, from Boise, Idaho, but I want to know uh, what do you do for a living and how did you start practicing sports, like from the very beginning? Oh, <laughs> like from the very beginning? <laughs> sure, like I, I know you, you started from climbing, ninja warrior, track and field. Tell me about it. Yeah, I guess from the very beginning, um, I kind of just did the typical sports, soccer, basketball, um, and then track and field. Um, my my teachers were amazing. They were the ones that really um, pushed me to get into triple jump, my coaches and teachers at the time. But um, here, we were not allowed to triple jump until high school. Um, I'm hey. not sure if that's still a rule or... I think it's just kind of safety because it's hard on your joints. Um, so I ended up doing, uh, you know, track and field in high school. Um, they had me uh, doing a lot of the sprints, but I was mostly a jumper. And then um, I actually quit basketball for track and field. And then um, I also got into rock climbing. <laughs> so my local rec center where my mom would um, take me almost – almost every single day, every night after school, uh, she would go swim and I would usually play basketball, but then I kept noticing the climbing gym. And I was like, one day I was like, I got to try that. And then I think pretty much from then on, I was hooked. <laughs> so, um, so I kept with climbing and then track and field through high school. Uh, I quit soccer. It's just, there's too much going on, right? You can't do everything. I still find that to be true. <laughs> um, And then college, I went to University of Idaho, which is up in northern Idaho. And uh, I got a, well, I was a walk-on for my freshman year. Uh, so no scholarship or anything. Just he, She called me up last minute. Do you want to join the track team? And I said, okay. Um, <laughs> and then uh, fast forward one year, I got a full ride scholarship um, my sophomore year and on for long and triple jump. So, and then I just continued uh, with the rock climbing. I always... That's kind of my true love is rock climbing, um, mostly bouldering, which is uh, without ropes. You're mostly falling onto the crash pads and going up kind of a short distance, um, usually no higher than like 15, 20 feet, you know. Um, and it's I kind of compare it to like sprinting versus long distance running. Uh, bouldering is more the sprinting. You're doing um, more dynamic moves, more powerful moves. Um, maybe steeper terrain, whereas uh, the rope climbing is more endurance based. So longer, uh, more movement. Um, you tend to get really pumped. <laughs> yeah. And then, uh, okay, that was in my early 20s. Uh, I did track and field and climbing, done with school, uh, just kept climbing. I got to travel all over the world. Um, I've climbed in Australia, the Grampians, uh, Fontainebleau, France. Um, Albaracine, Spain, a um, little bit in Thailand. I did a little uh, deep water soloing. That that hurts my bum too much. <laughs> you just climb up and then you fall into the water. And oh, I'm not a strong swimmer, so 
yeah, that was fun, but uh, yeah, <laughs> not for me. Um, and then uh, let's see, when I turned about 30, I decided to try out for American Ninja Warrior. So I submitted my application and um, got home one day and my husband hands me the phone and he was like, you, you got the call here. <laughs> Whoa. And it was uh, like in uh, two and a half weeks, they said, you know, come on down. You can be on American Ninja Warrior. And <laughs> it's like, oh, a little panic, right? <laughs> but super excited. Um, so I competed on season seven, eight, and nine of American Ninja Warrior. Uh, my first season I did not bad but not great like I fell on the third obstacle um but uh it was pretty nerve-wracking it was quite an experience you compete at night time uh, you only get one shot and if you're there the night before you can kind of like look on the sidelines and see what all the obstacles are but you definitely don't get to practice you know okay. so yeah and then uh but uh season nine was my best year uh, cause I'd actually been training for it. You know, I was almost obsessive about it, <laughs> like just training really hard and, uh, Ninja Warrior is kind of its own sport, especially right now. It's like all these young kids are just grew up watching, you know, the, the TV show and now they're just kicking butt <laughs> now that they're old enough to be on the show. So, um, I did the, it's called the UNAA, uh, ultimate ninja association something like that in the there's another association ninja and so that's it's almost like um um you know the arm lifting usa okay. uh, grip sport yeah kind of its own sanctions um so that was fun i got to travel around for different competitions um and then i basically stopped doing ninja warrior after um three seasons um, because I wanted to start a family. So now I have two kiddos and um, still been climbing. Rock climbing is still there for me and discovered a grip sport in this past year. So yeah, <laughs> to sum it up. Perfect. And about, <laughs> a, I know that you are wine warrior, Tammy. Tell me about the vino. What oh, the vino. part has the vino in your life? Right. <laughs> I should have some vino with me right now, but I guess a little, maybe after this, <laughs> yes. you should be too. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, yeah. So my parents started a winery in Idaho. It's actually one of the oldest wineries. Um, my dad was in the military in the air force and was stationed in Germany. And that's where he got bit by the, the wine bug. And so back in 1982, which was actually a year before I was born, uh, he decided to, with my mom, uh, plant the grapes uh, back in his home state of Idaho. So um, he was stationed all over uh, Thailand where he met my mom and then uh, over, you know, Germany, Thailand, everywhere, Illinois, and then Hawaii, and then got back to Idaho, where, which is where he is from. So um, kind of settled down, retired in, back in Idaho and planted the vineyard, um, planted some kids too. There's three of us running around and we were free child labor so <laughs> lots of uh grown up farming i kind of think that's actually where i got the start of some good strong uh grip work it's just a lot of farm work um picking rock uh if you think about it i held on to lots of wine bottles <laughs> yes which are about three pounds each for one wine bottle um and it's i think it's about three a little over three inches uh diameter so as a kid, you know, that's pretty fat, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and I actually watched one of the videos, uh, your videos of Ninja Warrior, where you are like uh, doing box jumps with the yeah. little glass of wine. And I right. sort of watch a little of the operation of the winery. And it's a lot of work. It many is a boxes, lot of work. Yeah. many machines. It's like uh, definitely must uh, uh, gave you like strong hands growing up. Yeah. On Till yeah. today, I think. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, my husband and I, we jumped in around 2005. And that's when we kind of started really carrying it on and implementing new things like a wine club and doing more, you know, events and weddings. And um, I design, I'm the more artistic, creative side, whereas Mike's the more practical, analytical. Uh, he does the winemaking and uh, vineyard management. And I plan all of our events and 
manage our staff and our team and do all kind of the silly stuff. We have a, an event called the Wino Olympics and it's a 5k uh, obstacle course race. And so it's one of the gyms that I trained at when I was doing Ninja Warrior. We team up and it's a lot of fun. There's, you know, big medicine ball carries out in the vineyard and uh, tire pulls and just lots of like balance stuff and, and running, of course. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. A little bit of grip stuff. Yeah. What, what, okay. do, what grip events do you include in the, in that Olympics or are, have, have you included anything? Oh man, <laughs> this year I, sh I definitely should throw some, yeah, maybe, maybe a blob in there, huh? <laughs> yeah, that'd be fun. As far as like specific grip stuff, hmm. I don't think anything's super grippy because we didn't have any climbing walls or uh, there's some walls to like big, tall, almost like Spartan walls to climb over. Yeah. And there actually there was a rope climb too. We had a rope climb. Yeah. But you got me thinking I'm going to throw some some grippy stuff in there. <laughs> yes. Yes. And yeah, throw it and, and record it because it sounds super fun. And actually I yeah. watched some of you, the winery videos and you guys do everything. Everything. The design, the wine, <laughs> the events. And I, I follow the, the Instagram page of the winery. And well, the yeah, labels are really beautiful. Uh, oh, I, well, <laughs> since in Chile we are like a wine country, we are full. Come visit. Full, full. <laughs> yeah, if you come, you should try. There are many good wineries here, and and yeah, they do like really cool events. But there are no Olympics or no bands like uh, you are doing. It's like it makes me want to go and try try the event, try the experience. It's really yeah. Well, really I hear cool. you're you're really nice. You you look really like it's like a cozy place. I want to go for real. Yeah, we have um, big gardens. My mom does all the gardening and five acres of gardens. So um, I hear a little birdie, a little uh, rumor on the street that there's a a team coming up to the U.S. Are you coming up sometime? Oh, the the arm lifting Chile team. No, yeah. this time. This time of the year, I, I am not going. But when I answer okay. your questions for me, I am going to tell you a little more about that because there's a, okay. there's a, there's a reason. There's a reason. A good reason. Okay, okay. Related to, reason. to my marriage. <laughs> well, oh, okay. <laughs> let's go, Tammy. I want to know, how did you came into grip sport? I know it's recent, but I am really curious to know how did you came into this sport? Well... You may have heard of this amazing firecracker lady that like gets super into things. She slaps her face. She slaps other people around. Her <laughs> name is Jen Tibbenham. <laughs> yes. Yeah. yes. She's from, actually, she's from Idaho, but she lives in the UK right now. But I consider her Idahoan <laughs> yes. from my home state. Uh, we met actually when we were in college on the track team, but she went to Boise State, which is, you know, down here in Boise. I went up north to U of I, um, and we met at a party, you know, <laughs> we just, yeah, we were shooting the shit and <laughs> we became good friends and we're still friends now. And it's rad. Um, when she comes and visits, she'll bring random, like she would bring her random implements. And I kind of was like, this girl's a little weird with all of her, like, you know, <laughs> <laughs> like, what is all this stuff? And then yes. I was like, but I kind of like it, you know, it's fun. And like, I don't know, we were just getting into it. She would come over to my garage and bring all her stuff. And then she would climb on the wall a little bit. And it continued like we both had kids. So we were, she would bring her grip implements over and we bring the babies over and we would be changing diapers and then doing the rolling handles. And <laughs> in fact, I think you learned what a, what a shark is, right? Sorry, I think remember? you you tell me yes, but but I I didn't understand like in context. It was like not sure if if you could explain it to me like in context of France and I don't know. Okay, um, well I was making a birthday wrap because Jen's birthday was like two weeks ago, so I yes. In the the wording was I was trying to make it rhyme. I said um, post, you know, changing babies' diapers postpartum, competing in grip comps. 
Um, and then, oh, then changing the baby's diapers post shardum, right? Uh, postpartum. So post okay. after and the shard, you know, it's a, a fart and a shit. <laughs> yes. <laughs> now I, now I understand shard. perfectly. Yeah. Okay. Good. Okay. So anyways, um, she, she was coming home last summer, 2022 for the whole summer um, with her kids. Um, and then she said, hey, if I host a super series, uh, Arm Lifting USA Super Series, will you do it? And I was like, okay, fine. You know, I thought I was doing her a favor, but she was doing me the favor by getting me hooked into this sport. And so here we are today. <laughs> yeah, so I did the Super Series. Um, and actually, we did it at Amy Waddle's gym. Does that name ring a bell? Amy Waddle's? Not yet. I, I, I must do my homework. Yeah. But is she into yeah. strong woman, into, into grip? Yeah, she's a strong woman, but she also, uh, I think she had the Axel um, world record for quite a long time. I okay. think Sarah just beat it recently, and Gabby, I think. But um, she's from Boise, Idaho, and she she went to Russia for the world championships back in, like, I think it was maybe 2019. Yes, I yeah, remember that, that, that contest, yeah. Yes. Yeah, so, yeah, she lives right here, and I've been trying to lure her back into it, but... Um, she might, she might, yeah. She seems but interested. I think she's she's not competing like uh, these days. It's no, like she took a retired. Break. Um, I don't know exactly the reason, but I, she's still doing strong woman, strong man work. Um, competing in that, I think she might have some back issues going on, but I'm not exactly sure. But um, she has my Saxon bar right now, so <laughs> yeah. So I think she's 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 doing grip at her her gym. I'm sure she is secretly getting ready. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. And after your first competition, Tammy, what made make you like, oh, I am staying here. I am buying all the implements. Uh, I want to compete in grips for. What made you uh, take that decision? Yeah. Well, I did the Super Series one, and then there's another one, right? So you got to do both. <laughs> Okay. And you got to do the, you got to keep going, right? And go to the Olympia. It just keeps going. And then once you're at the Olympia, you do that. And then you go to the Arnold's and then a whole year has flown by. <laughs> so I don't know. It just kind of, it's fun because um, I feel like there's always a competition that you can kind of sign up for. And then you have some goals and you have some focus. You can work those implements specifically. And yeah, my collection grew pretty fast this past year. So <laughs> Which was yeah, the first really thing that you that you bought? The first implement that you got home? Oh, I think probably the blue fat grips. I think, um, hmm, because they're so easy and pretty inexpensive. You know, you can take them anywhere with you. Uh, let's see. The Saxon bar took me a little bit to you know commit to that, but then I I just I got one after a couple months trying to think i think i got a the hilt pretty quickly the vertical yes. pipe yeah yeah i like the vertical lifts um and the hub the hubs everything's just pretty reasonable you know yeah as far as like price and since since you're coming from a climbing background which discipline was like really natural to you or let's say easier mm Hmm. Well, so King Kong, I thought the grab ball felt climberly. The grab ball. Yes. I didn't have one to practice on prior to King Kong, um, but when I got there, it just felt it felt good in the hand. Just kind of a kind of like an open crimp, almost like a three finger drag. You know, you just keep these three pretty open. Yeah. Um. You would think the pinches, but the pinches are different for climbing versus the grip sport. Um, I feel like with pinches, I don't know, it's it's less hand and more maybe peck and this guy. Um, <laughs> Your <and> lats. <laughs> lats, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Actually, uh, ben Cosi from Australia told me the, the same thing. I was hoping like, oh, he's going to pull like 50 kilograms on the flask. 
And he, he was like, no, we never do pinches like this. It's more like right. a different movement than actually climbing you use like your whole body. It's not like the grip where you do like this and that's it. <laughs> exactly. Yep. Yeah, you're right. Ben's right. Yep. <laughs> I agree. Um, yeah. I don't know if anything came like crazy naturally. I'm looking at my, I keep looking this way because all my, my collections right here. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. Or maybe the axle because I, when I climb, I like to open hand things. So the axle, I feel like kind of fits that shape, you know, the cupping. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. Tell me, and speaking about your training, how do you structure your training sessions? Okay. When I first got into grip uh, a little over a year ago, I was trying to work on my deadlifts because I was having a little bit of low back pain. Um, just, just a little bit of tightness back there. And I found that deadlifting made it feel better. So, um, and I was using the five, three, one, uh, Wendler. Have you heard of Wendler five, three, one? Of course. I, I used right. to do power lifting a couple of years ago. So I went into five uh, times five Jim Wendler and many methods. Uh, th that you can see online and oh I'm going to try this <laughs> yes I know it yeah yeah so I just kind of picked that and went with it uh, <laughs> and it seemed to help um, so that's kind of how I applied my approach to uh, to grip and my my husband um, he, he kind of put together a little program for me just I needed something kind of simple you know <laughs> and it's just it's busy with the kids and the work and just trying to get everything in. So I definitely needed a training program. Um, and so I did that for a while with the five, three, one, and also just kind of playing around with the different implements and trying to figure out, you know, how to grab each one, uh, sumo versus traditional stance, um, chalk, like quickly learned that, you know, some of the rolling handles don't like chalk. So, <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. I'm trying to think. I don't know. The training program was a little bit off and on sporadic, but I would train three to four days a week generally, and then climbing too. Uh, I found it really difficult to uh, train grip for the Arnold's because it was my peak bouldering season and it was okay. kind of a long bouldering season. Yeah. My local area is called Swan Falls and it's 30 minutes from here. Uh, it's more of a winter season. It's a little bit warmer down in the, the Canyon. So I was constantly trying to get out and, you know, work on my climbing projects, but then also train for the Arnold's. Uh, it's just really hard. <laughs> yeah. My hands were pretty um, stoked. And there was days where I wouldn't train for grip. I would just climb. Um, and then I went to the Arnold's and then uh, I realized, you know, I haven't had a break. I've just been go, go, go with the grips. So I took actually about one month off um, and then got restoked for a super series in which I contacted Yves Gravel from Canada. Yes. Yeah. And uh, I kind of pestered him into uh, making a program for me for uh, bouldering and grip sport. So Sounds really said, yeah. like, like, a, like a dream because I tried to get into bouldering uh, after I started grip and I couldn't do the mix myself. So it sounds really good. Like a uh, best of yeah. both worlds. Yeah, I think so. There's been times where I could really uh, see that my grip training has helped my climbing um, on some specific uh, holds. I had a project that I was not able to do, I don't know, four years ago up in uh, Riggins, Idaho. It's a beautiful area. It's like sandy beaches, water, and amazing rock. It's kind of a weird conglomerate rock, but um, there's this bad, bad pinch. I could not even like hang on to it before, but I was like, oh, the grip training is paying off. Like, hit that pinch and, you know, <laughs> it down. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Perfect. And but yeah, Eve's, Eve's program has been yeah. working out um, really well. So I started that about one month before the Super Series. And so it, right now it's about, what, three, three-ish months into that. Yeah. He keeps me busy. <laughs> Excellent. And a uh, general physical preparation. Do you do like, I don't know, uh, 
weights, pull-ups, calisthenics, uh, squats. Uh, how do you put that into the mix of your of your week of training? Yeah, so you can't really ever take the jumper out of me because I was a long and triple jumper for, you know, I don't know, 10 years of my life, 12 years. <laughs> yes. So I like to do box jumps. Yeah. Um, we have a local YMCA and they have they have the nice boxes there that I can, I turn it to the tallest side and then I stack weights, like 45 pound plates on top. Um, I think my tallest is from a single standing without running or jumping into it. Just straight up jump is like 42 inches. So okay. I'm kind of scared to go higher because, you know, when you go down, you go down hard sometimes. <laughs> I, I think I, I've never fallen from a box jump, but yeah. I, I, but when when you fall, I, I think when you fall after you are 20, it hurts. It really hurts yeah. and it's hard to get up. Uh, yes, and that weight room gets packed in there, so <laughs> hurts in different ways too. Yeah. yeah. Um, besides um, jumping, I um, well, with kids, I end up, I do walk a lot, actually, Um Sylvia, my youngest, she's two. She's getting a little heavy for my backpack that I carry her in. Um, but she was kind of a tough little baby from the get-go. Uh, she's on the fussier side. <laughs> so the only thing that would really calm her down was walking. So from like the day that we took her home <laughs> till, I don't know, a year, like evenings, she would just get so fussy. So I just, we walk and walk and walk outside. And then she's happy. So <laughs> Perfect. Um, I just really like walking. It feels, it feels good on my back. Um, it kind of loosens everything up. And I don't know, for me, I, I never used to walk without when I didn't have kids. Um, but now I love walking. So when I was doing Ninja, I was doing a lot of sprinting, just like short sprints. But I've, not been doing that so much <laughs> that hurts too my knees feel like they're getting a little yeah they're talking a little bit but yeah um I, I should probably bench press more but I I don't I I do a little overhead um like single arm presses and yeah that's about it I would say I mean I, I like to move a lot and play a lot so when I go to the playgrounds with my kids, I'll, I'll play in the monkey bars and I'll do pull-ups. And I was able to do two muscle-ups on the bar yesterday. So <laughs> Yesterday. Excellent. I yeah. I, I, I think I, I saw a video of you doing the ring muscle-ups and I was like, oh, Tammy's super strong. And some pull-ups with weight. Oh. Really big respect, Tammy. It's been a while. Yeah. I haven't done a muscle-up on, on rings um, in a while, but... I, I bet I could do it with a kip, but strict, eh, we'll see. <laughs> yeah. A couple of years ago, I used to do full calisthenics. I'm talking about like 2016. And I could do like 10 muscle ups. I could do like the ring muscle ups. And uh, I tried to do them again, like one or two years ago. And I lost them. <laughs> I can't do them <laughs> anymore. So it's like uh, use it or lose it. Maybe someday I'll right. do it again. I don't know. I think once you've done it, though, I think if you just give it a few days, it would it would come back quick. Yeah, I I should uh, get a pair of, a pair of rings also because I I don't have them anymore. But yeah, calisthenics are are super fun. I wanted yeah. to ask you, Tammy. Uh, I know that you have uh, participated into Super Series and King Kong and many competitions. So, which is your favorite group event to to train? Ooh, uh, favorite group event to train. Okay, I I kind of like the hub, the freestyle hub, like this position. Yes. I just feel really strong in that position. I don't know why. I don't, maybe it's the size of my hand. Um, I don't know, but yeah, I like the open freestyle hub. I don't like the claw style. <laughs> But um, I really enjoy training on the axle bar, the axle. Yes. Yeah, I just, because I feel like my whole body is just like working hard, you know? Yeah. 
the Saxon bar and I, we have a kind of a love hate relationship. <laughs> um, I have, I have synovitis in my fingers, my middle fingers. Let's see. I don't know if you can see, see this finger, the middle one. Yeah. Oh, it doesn't quite straighten. Yeah. It's on both. They're like super wonky. My other fingers, I can straighten fully, but the, sorry, I don't mean to <laughs> not, you know, no, I know, I know. No problem. Yeah. But it's um it's they call it synovial fluid. It's in the joint. Um, but it just gets really stiff and achy and it's generally just from overuse. Just too much uh volume, I think. <clears throat> and there's certain things that aggravate it like the Saxon bar and uh pinch blocks. So yeah. I I, I used to like the Saxon, but I'm kinda like, uh it just it hurts, you know. <laughs> A little bit more so than the others yeah <clears throat> i like the rolling handles but i find them um i get a little bit of wrist pain on the the rolling handles just a little bit more so about three months ago and it seems like it's getting better um eve's has some uh what do you call the the wrist wrench programmed in yes. yeah and i find that to be helping just my general wrist strength so there we go <laughs> Nice. Welcome back, Tammy. Thank you. Well, now I'd like to ask you about your grip goals for the rest of 2023 or for 2024. What would you like to accomplish? Oh, it's a hard one because um, there's just so many competitions that like, I want to go to, you know? <laughs> Oh man, um, and it's hard to travel very far right now, just with how young the kids are. Um, they're two and four years old, and uh, I did so. We did a family trip last year to the Olympia to Las Vegas, and we turned it into a two-week trip. And so we went to Red Rocks, and we bouldered and climbed, and then I had you know the grip competition. That was a lot of fun. Uh, I do find it hard to do both climbing and grip um, if I have a big competition. So I didn't really get that much climbing in. So, um, but it was a fun family trip. And then for the Arnolds, I actually flew by myself and uh, I got to stay with uh, Canada Kathy, uh, Kathy Fossey, Facey from Canada. Yes. That was a lot of fun. We were roomies. Um, that was so much fun. We, we both got in really late the night before the competition. Um, like planes were delayed and I don't know. My, I think we were... I'm two hours difference, so it was two hours later, and then the woman competed first thing in the morning, so we got up oh, super shit. early. Like, I, I should have flown in the day before just to get extra rest, but, um, you know, with kids and stuff, I, I can't be gone for too long. It's like we just start missing each other, and, <laughs> and it's hard on the other spouse, too. It's, it, it is a bit of extra work, you know, um, at this point in time, but... Uh, I, I do want to go to the Arnold's again. That was a lot of fun last year, the Arnold's um, in Columbus. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to the uh, uh, the World Championship in Orlando. So there's actually a climbing competition, um, and it might be the same weekend. And I'm not a huge uh, rock climbing competitor these days, uh, but I did my first one after having kids last year, and... Um, I made it to finals, which was really cool because it was mostly kids. I think I was like twice the age of everybody in finals. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, seriously, though. <laughs> uh, but, man, they're so strong. And a lot of them were from out of state. I was the only um, local girl in finals. So that was just kind of cool, you know. Like, I have found that um, after having kids, I've become, like, stronger than before. I don't know if it's because you focus your time more on what you really want to do with your time. Uh, when you have, you know, only one hour or two hours, you try to make the most of it, right? <laughs> Whether that's taking a nap or training. <laughs> yeah. Um, I wish I could go to the Sweden competition. Seems like everybody's going there. <laughs> Sarah and Jen, uh, they're both going. Yes. And, uh, I, I think Re Rebecca Roberts is going. Oh, so, she she's super a, strong. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> she's lifted the inch, Thomas inch dumbbell. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, as far as competitions, 
we'll see. Um, I'm a little bit, you know, spur of the moment type too. Like if something works out, I'll, I'll just make it happen. Um, I went to Portland last year to the couch, um, couch potato brothers, their garage for King Kong. Yes. Yeah. And that was so much. Yeah. And I convinced a friend to go with me and she never really done grip sport before, but she just jumped in and competed and she had a great time. She like had everybody's names memorized by the end of the competition. Yeah. <laughs> so this year I'm hoping to go back to Portland to the couch potato brothers, um, to their King Kong. And that's, um, I think end of October. So. Nice. And are now you're preparing for any, like for, for any stage of our lifting or for King Kong, which, which grip tools are you touching in your training these oh. days? Oh, well, I forgot to mention. So, because I like to foray into random things sometimes. So last year I did my first strongman competition. Um, Interesting. I didn't even really know what strongman, strong woman um, was <laughs> until I got into grip no, sport, I feel like. Now, now I don't, I, I am really questioning myself uh, that the sport is called strong men because women can practice it too. And it's like, yeah, right, right. This is, it's like, I do strong men, but I'm a, <laughs> I don't know, yeah. I, but, but yeah, it's from women and tell me about it. How was yeah, it? No. It goes both ways. Right. Um, well, I found out about it kind of randomly on a website. It was like friend of Jen's and I was looking at her website and then it said, Oh, there's a strong man, strong woman competition in Boise, Idaho. And it was in like one week. <laughs> and I, I was like, Oh, this looks like fun. I don't really know what a lot of these things are, but so I signed up for it and it's an all female competition called battle of the brawny babes. Yeah. And, um, it was at a brewery in the parking lot in July. It was like 105 degrees. <laughs> it was so hot, <laughs> but, um, yeah, that was where I first touched the Denny. She had Denny. Well, not stones, I but think, you know, Denny. Ray. I think Tammy that the first time that I saw you on Instagram was doing a dinner lift and I was like wow because I, I am really a, a huge fan of the dinner stones I have the the shirts from smash and pass I have my dinner rings I want to go there and lift the real dinner stones someday oh, so cool. I was like yeah. whoa she's really strong she's doing the <laughs> lift. um I don't know about that I still have like a gazillion pounds to go <laughs> till 700 um yeah Yeah, it's like, but, it was but a lot of fun. But but yes, I, I think Chloe Brennan, she's like the yeah. the lightest woman to lift them. I don't right. know yeah, her, her body weight, but uh, yeah. but I think everything is possible. And you're strong, yeah. so so you could eventually get there. I'm pretty sure. Well, that was my so last year at that strongman competition was my first time trying it, and it was um I was in the. Uh, like the novice category so okay. it was pretty light for I guess uh, for a gripper right um, so I was able to do like a gazillion reps and I banged my shins up <laughs> but anyways um, I s went to her house the lady that hosts the competition and she loaded them up pretty heavy and I think that's the video you saw but I think I was able to get like uh, 505 pounds which you know only another what two, 240 or so to go <laughs> Yes, it's 700. And, yeah, I don't know. I start feeling a really bad pain on the back of my back. I'm not sure which muscle that is, but um, it feels like it's about to tear when I get really high up in those numbers. You know, 500 pounds. <laughs> so uh, I think uh, I need to get reps in. Yeah, and and also the dinis are really asymmetric, like different heights, different weights. It it could be like really hard on the back. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Technical too. Yeah. Yeah. I forgot what the original question was. <laughs> uh, your goals, your goals for 2023. Goals. Um, so I'm going to try to do um, the Rolling Thunder uh, women's female record for pull-ups this year at some point. Excellent. Yeah. I really love when, when, People in grip sport do something related like to calisthenics, like the one arm pull up with the rolling thunder or the pull ups with the rolling thunder plus weight, w which is the female record that, yeah. these days. Uh, so it's, it's 10 pull ups right now. Um, 
with the Rolling Thunders. But yeah, Eve's kind of got me inspired because did you see his one arm? He did, uh, I think, three reps. Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, oh, I have access. Amy's letting me bar. We traded, you know, so she has my Saxon bar and I have her Rolling Thunder. So, yeah. <laughs> and the climbing gym I go to also has a Rolling Thunder, so I can train there. Yeah. Excellent. So Eve has that incorporated in my training plan right now. Yeah. I think you will ra you will raise the bar like pretty high on on that uh, on that <laughs> event. I'm pretty sure. And Thanks. since you have you have like uh, you have been to many competitions uh, during your let's say grip sport career, uh, is there anything that you'd like to to add to the competitions or change? What do hmm. you think? Oh, let me, I had a thought I had to get out too. I would like to get um, 200 on a vertical bar. Sorry, I forgot to mention that. Because <laughs> I got 190 at the Super Series on the grandfather clock. So I feel like Whoa. it's just a nice for 200, you know, just another 10 pounds. <laughs> Although when you're at your max, those like, just those tiny little single double pounds sometimes feel like the world, you know. <laughs> yeah. So that's one goal, the vertical bar, 200 pounds. Um, the axle would be rad to hit 300, but I, I'm still quite a ways from my axle. I think my PR is 264, so 36 pounds to go. But, um, you know, I, I see people like Sarah. She's been doing grip sport for, I think, about five, five years now, right? Okay. And she's still, like, making all, all these huge PRs and big jumps, which I don't know, I've been climbing a long time and I, I know you do go through phases, you know, where you level off, you, you don't get those like big gains that you do in the very beginning. So yeah, it's cool to see like Jen and Sarah, they've been doing it a long time and they're still getting PRs. And so that gives me hope. <laughs> yeah. But as far as anything um, in grip sport, like I'd like to see to change. So or to add asking? something or Ooh. like something that you would yeah. like to see. I, I like the idea. I like rocks, like, because I'm a rock nerd. So I like to climb rocks. But um, whenever I go to like to the river, we went to the Oregon coast. Um, there's tons of stones, you know, where we were. And I just like, I like picking up rocks, like big fat rocks or weir weird little crevices in them, you know. <laughs> Um, so I think that'd be rad to include that in some type of um, competition, like a surprise element, you know, like at the Olympia or the Arnold's, like, just like, boom, like throw in a fourth event where no one can specifically train for it, you know, because it's unique. The rocks are, you just show up and like, take off the towel and there they are. <laughs> It'd be so fun, right? <laughs> the, the surprise item. I like it. <laughs> yeah. I feel like, you know, you don't make money off of that. So, like, the companies that are making the grip implements don't get their, you know, <laughs> their gains. But for the athletes, it's a lot of fun. It seems like it would it'd be a good addition. And there's, I'm sure that, you know, the one in Sweden has a rock um, medley. I'm pretty sure. Like a, can you pick up all these rocks? Yeah. Yes. I, I wanted to jump into some, like, uh, miscellaneous questions um okay I, i saw a video where you were like building uh, and painting something i don't remember the word but you seem to be like really crafty uh, so my question is is have you ever built any training tool or grip sport tool yourself oh i know i've built some random ninja things back in the day but I'm trying to remember what they were they were probably sketchy and like not safe um, <laughs> we took like some PVC pipes you know okay. PVC pipes because our house we bought an old junker house and it came with a lot of stuff <laughs> and like these old PVC pipes and so cut them up and turn them into like ninja like hamster wheels you know but one of them I had like a sharp blade coming off like Ooh. Yeah, <laughs> not safe at all. Um, 
my husband helps me. I'm not super great at construction, <laughs> but he helped me build the quintuple steps, you know, the where you jump from one to another. What else? Um, like our wrist wrench made that up. <laughs> yeah, I've made some really uh, some strange stuff, but nothing crazy with the grip tools or artistic, I guess. But that's a good idea. You know, I actually, last night I ordered, Eve's told me, I was in my training program, I have the jug from King Kong. Yes. Um, I've been trying to order one, but I can't get one. <laughs> me me too. Me too. Me yeah. too, because I want to have my, my own venue, but he's not replying right. my emails. Well, um, there's a company called Nemesis Grip. They're based out of Canada. From Canada. I have seen them on, on Instagram. Yes. Yeah. And they made, like, it's done right now. They asked what colors I wanted. And I thought, oh, well, all my implements are, like, gray or black. So I ended up getting my daughter, Hazy. Her, she's four. Um, her favorite colors are pink and purple. Okay. I said, can you do pink and purple tie-dye? So he made the jug pink and purple tie-dye. And it's super cool. Beautiful. Um, and very inexpensive. So I'm going to ship off on Monday. So I highly recommend uh, nemesis script out of canada so I'm excited. i actually I, have a jug. I actually have a jug replica it was like one of the first things i i built i mean i didn't build it but the um a local manufacturer made some some grip tools well that that is linked cool. with the like the origin of uh, me jumping into grip sport actually there's <laughs> a grip guy here in chile called bruno Bruno twenty one SDPO on Instagram, so he's okay. the one that uh, that showed me the discipline, and I was like hooked from the first day. So he's he's like my your Jen, my exactly. Jen exactly. Bruno, yeah. He's he's and he's Nick, my Jen. Yeah, I gotta give shout my... out to Nick. Nick is uh, Nick went to Russia as well with Amy and the whole crew. Oh, Nick, okay. Uh, Nick, Elias. yes. Do you know Nick? I don't, I think I don't know him. Yeah, he hasn't been competing in a while, but um, man, he was really into it for quite a while, and he's the one that's like let me borrow all his grip gear. He's the one that gave me a blob, the and let me borrow a Saxon bar and his fat bar, and but anyways, I just feel like Nick has been like my cheerleader. You know, he's excellent, awesome. So I want you to tell me more about Bruno, though. Sorry. <laughs> well, Bruno. He told me about because I was doing powerlifting before grip, and actually I I was really into powerlifting. I had the opportunity to go to the South American Championship, really into powerlifting. So I decided to cool. quit that, and I was like, uh, I had this empty space for sports. And Bruno told me, "Hey, this is a really cool sport. I am starting to practice grip sport, and actually I will make loading pins, a jug." Uh, an Iron Mind, uh, Iron Mind Blockbuster replica and a Rolling Handle replica. Uh, uh -huh. Do you want to uh, make one with me? And I was like, yeah, sure. My first grip sport package. So I have that jug. I still have it. I bought it in 2018. So I still have it and I can train with it. But I think this year I won't <laughs> make it to, <laughs> to King Kong. So yeah, maybe for another year. But yes, is I, that I, because of the reason that you're telling me about later? No, it's it's because I don't have the oh. jug and the and the crusher myself. That's oh, why okay. I am not going to to be into the King Kong. But but actually, I I want to jump into into the questions that you have for me. Okay. Would you like Tammy to to yes. you ask the questions to me? This is really fun to me because I have been doing like okay. 19 interviews, but I yes. always wanted to be like interviewed myself. So. Tell me, yes. this is going to be improvised. I would like to know. Okay, yes. are you ready, Ponto? I am ready. <laughs> what is your grip strength and weakness? Well, since I I have like a power lifting and calisthenics background, uh, rolling handles uh, have been a, a strength of mine like since the very beginning. I am not going to say that I'm like uh, on top level like Eric Rusin or Jed Johnson or, or like that, but the first time I touch a rolling uh, a rolling handle, 
I could lift uh, 60 kilograms. I don't know how much is that in pounds, yeah. but it's... Like 130 something, right? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, last year on Skillet Hands, actually, I'm, I am wearing the, the Skillet Hands contest shirt. Oh, that's rad. <laughs> yeah, it's a really good one. Actually, the, it's going yeah. to be like next month, Skillet Hands uh, number three. It's like a multi-venue uh, it's run by Nick Sanders. He competes in armor lifting USA as well. Um, well, there I, I could lift like um, 82 kilograms. So I am like getting closer to a good level. So that's, yeah, that's that, really good. I think that's my strength on the, on the axle bar. I never train axle because my axle bar, it's on at my parents' house. It's like a two-hour drive from my apartment. Uh, I never trained, but uh, I lifted uh, 142 kilograms. That's like, oh. mm -hmm. uh, over, uh, that's over 315. Uh, yeah. yeah, I'm not sure how much, but it's like uh, good for me. And hey, Panto. Yes. That sounds like a good reason to go visit your parents, though, right? We always go because because both of my parents are. I mean, my parents and my wife's parents, they are both uh -huh. from the same city. So we go. But when we go, since we don't uh, see each other like uh, the whole week, we, I don't know, we have a tea or make a barbecue. So we okay. share. <laughs> I, I don't have so much time to work out. Yeah. I have a big temptation because I have my own uh, Dini Stones replicas. Like uh, they add 700 pounds. They are giant and i have that on, on the on the backyard and, I, and i'm like i'd love to but i come to yeah. visit the family so family first and my okay, weakness yeah. my weakness i think um uh, everything more climbing it's my weakness everything that where i am like this like more crimpy it's my weakness uh -huh. in example yeah. i am not so good at hubs and I am not so good at pinching. So that's like, if there's a movement where I feel like pain or discomfort is while doing hops or pinch. Yeah. That's yep. pretty much it. Awesome. Yeah, it's that tendon strength takes time, you know? So just keep at it, right? <laughs> yeah, it'll come. <laughs> okay. Yes. Another question for you. Hey, do you know who Towns Van Zant is? Have you heard of? I I did my homework and and I heard. Is he your best I, man? I, Lefty. I, <laughs> uh, I mean, since I am not uh, the Pancho of the song, I am a really good Pancho. I don't know if Lefty okay. will be my like like my best man. Uh, so okay, okay. <laughs> So I, I I think no lefty will not be my my best man. But that what that question, I I I actually played the guitar. So I was listening to the song, trying to I wanted to play like right here, but my wife is with, is living in the next room. So, uh, <laughs> well, it's linked to the the answer okay. of the next question. So, please. Yeah. Please. So you have a wedding coming up, right? Yes. Woo -woo. Congratulations. It's, it's going to be like uh, less than a month. We are like oh fully into the wedding um, right now. I was curious, how, you, how did you and your fiance meet? As I was saying, uh, the, the answers were linked. Since I play the guitar, I used to play the guitar on church. Like since I was a little kid. Uh, this means like when I was 40 or 15. Until I was like 20, I was like the kid with the guitar on the church. Like I have all right here in my memory. In fact, if today I am in a church and they need a, someone to sing and play the guitar, I can go in with, I don't need any paper, etc. And yeah. I was playing for a, like a, on a, I, I don't know if it was a Sunday. And my wife came uh, in front of me. I was 15. I was 16 and she was 15 and she was like, Hey, how are you? And I was like, crazy, crazy. I, I fell in love instantly, oh. instantly, instantly. 
Aww. I saw her and I was like, uh, "Oh, she's super beautiful." I, I'm uh, inside. I, I I have to I have to act like a, a really uh, like interesting guy or and uh, try to not look nervous. <laughs> I was like that on the first time and and we met on the church and and yeah, since that day we I don't know if we exchange exchange phone numbers or or maybe messenger. I don't know if you use messenger, but <laughs> We exchange messenger. We start chatting every day, and since uh, actually I met her on my birthday of that year, Aww. it was like March 18, and we were speaking like since that day, and there were like three months until I asked her to be my girlfriend, and we have been together ever since. 14 years. Oh. It has wow. been quite a ride. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. That's cool. Um, I guess I had a random question at your wedding. Do you think there's going to be any uh, appearances by any grip implements at your wedding? Actually, they are <laughs> two like forbidden things at the, the event. <laughs> is, uh, event uh, no, like no, no. Uh, co conve yes, at uh, the convention center because well, I play the guitar. I used to play at the church, but I am a really crazy metalhead, thrasher guy. I am really into heavy metal. And I actually That's played awesome. it. I played the electric guitar, so I wanted to do my personal show or something. Uh, and they say okay. no. There are many neighbors uh, nearby, so we we just have the the music of the DJ and no shows. And I was like, oh okay. And the ceiling, the no, the floor is really like brand new, and it's like a how do you say in English, like marble floor. And so I am not uh, uh, thinking of uh, bringing yeah. any blobs <laughs> and, and stuff. But yeah. last weekend, uh -huh. my girlfriend showed me an Instagram video of the, well, when the bride uh, throws like the flowers. I don't know how to say the, <laughs> the uh -huh. flower. Okay. But the bouquet, yeah. Uh, regularly, uh, she just throw it and the, all the friends try to grab it. Well, I saw an Instagram video. Well, they put an arm wrestling table so all the girls can arm wrestling for the flowers. Ooh. So my <laughs> my wife told me, hey, let's do this. And I was like, whoa. Maybe you remember <laughs> that that I uploaded a story of a guy on a, play, on a playground with the rolling thunders doing pull-ups. Many many days ago. Well, long story oh, short, I, yeah, I am really, yeah. I am re I am friend with a guy who's really into calisthenics, arm lifting, and uh, arm wrestling. And I asked him wrestling. like uh, in a text, "Hey, uh, may I borrow your table?" Yeah, sure. Whenever you want, I bring <laughs> it to your house. So we're ready. We are going to do that, and it's going to be, <laughs> it's going to be awesome. I I will record it so. Everyone in the Grips for Latino page can see in my wedding, girls Wait, so doing it, arm, um, arm wrestling. Is it just the girls? Just the ladies? Arm wrestling? I think it's going to be just the ladies because I don't want to be into arm wrestling <laughs> on my wedding oh. because, well. That'll be good, yeah. Here think, in, um, he here in Chile, will, it's like, uh, Do you think um, your wife is going to beat everybody? No, no, I don't. I don't think no. so. But 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 I think uh, her friends are going to be like uh, really taking the challenge. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> so that's like the 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 sporty part that we have uh, for the wedding so yeah. far. Maybe we came up with something else, but <laughs> I will record everything. <laughs> have you heard of? Uh, do you know Melody? Melody uh, Schoen Schoenfield from California. She no, is, I haven't. She's so badass. I met her at um, the Olympia last year. Yes. She's like, I don't know, maybe four foot nine. She's very petite. Okay. And she's got long hair, long hair that goes down to her, like her butt, you know, just beautiful long hair, petite. But um, she sings in a metal band. Whoa. And I think she plays guitar too. She's very talented. But yeah, she lifts. She like gets into it and she's super inspiring um but she's into metal because you know she lifts metal she sings metal yeah <laughs> yeah anyways um on that musical note do you think guitar playing has helped your finger strength with grip 
No, I, I don't think so. It's it's pretty different. I think it's like more of a technique thing, the guitar, rather than a strength thing. I mean, you have to do this really fast and mostly like yeah. bands, but it's not like uh, be a great guitar player will transfer you like to grip things, I, I think. <laughs> okay i think it i think it's a little difficult I, I play guitar a little bit and my fingers get tired but, <laughs> but you've yeah, been doing it... it since you were five let's see i think that's all the questions that i had for you um do you what are your grip plans for the year and next year do you have any competitions that you're going to and, and tell me more about what you're thinking coming up to the u.s you said earlier that you don't think it's going to happen oh yeah well, uh, we are not, I mean, I am not going to the U.S. this year. Actually, I went last year because I, I uh, asked my wife to marry me uh, in New York. And that's where I met. Uh, I had a competition with, uh, well, Skillet Hands. It was, uh, uh -huh. there was like Tim Butler, Alex Weha, uh, Charles Strange. I met the guys. It was really fun. Uh, so this year, since we are getting married, we will get married in a month married in a month and then we want to go to mexico so i am going to be more like the pancho of the song yes. <laughs> going to mexico and For the, the and... last yeah <laughs> yes no <laughs> yeah cool yes so since we are going to mexico it's going to be really hard to going to go to mexico and also go to the us in a different moment so now it's pretty hard and actually, uh, Bruno uh, talked to me about going to the U.S. And he told me that um, I had to like qualify on a tournament. And I think he did, he did the tournament like this weekend. Uh, it, it was not like a stage one or something. It was like the qualifier for the for Orlando. And it was the very weekend when my wife uh, had uh, her birthday. So. <laughs> Oh yeah. I, I had yeah. no chance to go. And anyway, I mean, if he offered me, well, if you lift more than anyone, I will pay you the plane ticket. It will be like, oh, maybe I could make my effort, but it's not like that. You have yeah. to pay for yeah. all your thing and now this year I right. won't I won't be able to make it, but uh, I I would really like to make yeah. it. I I also I always watch uh, Ricardo's interviews. I am a really huge fan of interviews. I am a really yeah. huge fan of the Grips show as well. And I Same. see that he's saying like, uh, yeah, they are coming from Chile, the whole team, and they are going to compete in Orlando. And, I, and I'm like, damn, I would love to go. But but yeah, this, oh. day, this year I won't be able to to make it. Yeah. It, it, it would be really... Year, but... It would be really great to like meet all of you in person, <laughs> like uh, after yeah. all the interviews. <laughs> but yeah, it, it will come. Yeah. Sorry, what? The Arnold's. Like, yeah, come the, Arnold's. the Arnold's. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I would love the to. Arnold's, uh, because it's you know it's the entire sports convention, so there was Ninja right next to the arm lifting, so yes. I was very distracted. I was kind of looking <laughs> both. Of us. And I, I attempted the course a couple times. There was one technical spot where I just kept falling. But but then there's all these uh, booths with, like, pull-up challenges, you know? So I won, like, you know, four shirts and, like, a shaker bottle. <laughs> yeah, so fun. But... I, I see that you're, like, uh, always saying yes to challenge, Tammy. I really like it. It's like, uh, can you lift this? And it's like, maybe I will give it a try. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> so I have, I have Nick, um, Kalias, the guy I was mentioning earlier. Yes. He's letting me borrow his, uh, like, it's a loadable dumbbell. And it's a two and, uh, what, three eighths. I measured it, and it looks like two and a half inches. Okay. But I think it's like three eighths. You know, not two and four eighths, but. <laughs> um, and there's like 96 pounds on it right now. So I think sometime in the next couple of weeks, I'm going to load it up and see what my max is i can get the 96 up pretty like not too bad but um you never know where you know the limiter is <laughs> yeah so it'd be cool to do my body weight right 
Yes, or and maybe someday the inch tumble. Who knows? Yeah, yeah. You never know. Keep it, you know, locked away. <laughs> yeah. Yes, it's just it's just a matter of time. Well, yeah. Tammy, I want to ask you the the questions from the audience, from the from all the followers. Oh, okay. there were actually <laughs> many questions. Okay. Uh, so, the first one uh, comes from Haley. I think uh, he seems, uh, her Instagram is Haley S G, Big Bell. Yeah, Haley. Uh, she wants to know: Do you rest between grip sessions? Because she says it always seems she's doing something grip related, implements bouldering, climbing. Uh, <laughs> Haley, you're right. <laughs> That's why I sleep at night like this. <laughs> My hands, <laughs> they're always you know like balled up. Um, She's totally right. Like I, there's times when I'm like, oh man, I'm doing so much with my hands, but it's like, it's almost like it's the new norm for me. And, um, I, I try to play it safe though, as long as I don't feel like I'm tweaking anything, you know, I have the synovitis in my middle finger, but I just try to, you know, not do a whole lot of volume. So I'm very intentional with what I train and when I train. Um, I do take, you know, occasional rest days here and there. So. So maybe I'll have a bouldering session one day, but it's not crazy intense, right? Maybe I'm just working more technical aspects of climbing, um, just working on movement. And then maybe that night I'll have like some rolling handle, you know, or vertical bar. So I do mix it up and there's ways to still get your climbing fix, right? Without going crazy on the hands. Um, I do find that climbing outdoors is a little bit less aggressive on my hands too. So um something about the gym that's just a little more aggressive and um in intense on the the tendons i think for me so uh, but yeah Haley's right i need to just keep an eye on the hands and give them some love i, I do a lot of uh, recovery scraping i have a scraper tool so i scrape mm -hmm. the forearms um i sauna i cold plunge like i try to get massages every now and then <laughs> so I, I do a lot of like stretching, like if I'm driving in the car on the steering wheel, I'll just push against the steering wheel, just try to stretch out the forearms and, uh, you know, the fingers. So actually yeah. her next question was, how often do you rest your grip? Oh, uh, yeah. So, you know, I take a few rest days during the week. Um, and it just depends, like if I'm having a stressful week with the winery or, or maybe the kids are having a rough, they're sick or something, I'll ease off. But um, I take one to two rest days a week. And by rest day, maybe I'll walk or, you know, do a little yoga or you know, do something. I like to just move. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. And um, her final question is, do you stop everything grip related before a competition? If so, how long? Uh, yeah, I kind of just base it off of when I did track and field. So I feel like um, the week prior to the competition start tapering off. So like, you know, still keep some movement and do similar movements, do a little bit of grip work or climbing or whatever you're easing off for, um, but just taper it down and then but still do a lot of, you know, mobility work and stretching and maybe get some more massage, <laughs> um, scraping. Um, yeah, but I definitely, I do need time to recover. Um, I had a mock comp for the super series that Eve's had me, Okay. um, but I did not rest like I normally do for it, you know, and my numbers were like, eh, not, not great. <laughs> and I think it was because I didn't rest enough. I only took like a day and a half off or two days maybe. <laughs> so, yeah. But you know, it's for me, everybody's different. So maybe what works for me doesn't work for, for Haley or for you, you know? Yeah. But yes. thanks, Haley. We haven't technically met yet, but I can't wait to meet you. <laughs> Excellent. Hi. <laughs> and we are back. Welcome back, Tammy. I got some wine. We're good now. <laughs> Excellent. Some white wine. I wanted to, to tell you that uh, my... Um, 
let's say parents in law, my wife's parents, they they are really into uh, cooking fish and everything from the sea, and they always cook it with a, a fine white wine by the side oh. every every weekend. Well, and actually, my and father is he's, he's really into red wine, really into. I am not not really yeah. geeky into wine. As I am into grip, but I really love wine. It's really tasty. Oh, good. Yeah. And it's okay if you're not geeky. You don't have to get geeky into everything, you know. <laughs> save, save it for the grip. And yeah. speaking about <laughs> geeky into grip, there's a really notorious uh -huh. grip guy these days, Ben Helms. He, right. wants, yeah. he wants to know what is your dream Blob goal monster. on Blub? <laughs> yes, he's the Blub monster. Yeah. He wants to know what is your dream goal for blob lifting. And he also says, I absolutely love watching your blob cleans. Oh, thank you, Ben. <laughs> um, ooh, so Nick, again, Kalias, uh, yes? man, he's got such cool stuff. So he left for the summer to Costa Rica to live in Costa Rica for the whole summer uh, with his family. He said, do you want to take some of my, my stuff out of my garage? <laughs> and he said, here, you can take the blob. I've got blobs. So he has a half uh, 80 and a half 100. So I took the half 80. And uh, yeah, it's I can get it Yeah, up. And I was able to clean it, awesome. bring it down somewhat safely. Um, yeah. The OK, so the half. 100 though different story <laughs> it's so wide like it's so fat i can't really my hands i measured them the other day they're uh seven and almost a quarter inches okay so i don't know if it's like a you must be this tall to ride type of thing you know <laughs> like at the fair <laughs> with the it's so fat i just maybe someday but it feels nearly impossible right now the half 100 but it's like a, a fat man 100 or it's like a legacy oh <sighs> see i don't know <laughs> let me I check I actually all... actually have i have a half 100 legacy let me let me know if your blood looks like this give me a second i don't have it with me but i if from my memory i'll try oh, my this best. one is pretty heavy but yeah, this is half 100. York side. It looks yeah, like this. Looks... That looks Does about seem... right, but I'm not sure. what what What's the other one look like? Do you know? I mean, this one, it, this is a legacy. And the shape of this one is like a kind of flat here and yeah. curvy okay. here. The fat man, it's yeah. like kind of flat both sides. Oh, okay. So it's it's a legacy. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, and I received this like less than a month ago. I am really crazy about it. I really like it. It's not easy. Yeah. What's that one? One twenty? No, that's a uh, well, a half one hundred as well. That's one hundred. Okay. Um. So the block, the the other one's harder, probably, right? Because it's yes, both curved. Yeah. The the fat man, yeah. the fat man is even wider. So. So yeah, it's really hard. Um, I'm not sure as far as like goals, like maybe you could help me figure that out. Like what would be something different I could do with what I have? Because I have a half 80, right? So I I have I heard that that it. they they use like uh plate mates, I think that's the name. Those are like magnets, like <laughs> one pound or two pounds. And that way you, you can make like the, the blob harder, but I am actually pretty new to the blob world uh, because yeah. I, I think I tried my first blob when I went to the US last year. And actually I don't know what kind of blob I tried to lift, but I lift like a half 85 from Alex. And not okay. sure if it was like a new generation, a fat man or anything. And then I received this one and I was like, uh, the first day, I think I managed to take it off the ground. 
but yeah, I'm still working on it. So it's a, a really yeah. new world for me. It's really fun, man. It's, it's addicting. You just, especially when I have friends coming over to my garage yes. for the first time, <laughs> I'm like, Hey, can you lift this? <laughs> so like, no, it's, normally... it's like, up. yeah, they, they and... never, they can never do that. When we have people over here, I have the grippers like on, on the living, living room exposed. So it's like, yeah, part of this gathering is to try which is the hardest gripper that you can close. <laughs> and everyone tries yeah. and everyone is like really uh, into it. By the way, Tammy, yeah. I wanted to ask you about grippers. Have you oh, tried gripper. training with grippers? So that's one of the things that Jen brought over one of those days. Yes. Before I started competing, but I don't even recall like what kind she brought over or... I just tried squeezing it. You know, I have a hard time squeezing the gripper that, like, on my bench bar for the okay. place. So <laughs> I don't think I'm a very good gripper squeezer. <laughs> but do you have grippers yourself? Like, uh, do you have any model on your collection? I don't. <laughs> no. I don't I know. Understand. It's... I get frustrated just trying to load the one off my bar yes enough that i'm like i don't know if i really want to do that <laughs> maybe i would i would try like if it was in front of me or if i go to the king kong you know um i might try it there that event last year was a lot of fun and i was so i've never been that exhausted after an event before because uh so we had what like five grip events last year right yes it was like a commemoration of uh so many years that they've held King Kong. I can't remember how many years, but uh, it was like a celebration. And then uh, afterwards, uh, oh, there's a guy there. I'm totally spacing on his name, but he he's into steel bending. Devin, Devin Hoover. I seen the video. Devin, the, Dr. The guy with, yeah. Dr. Devin, yes. Yes. <laughs> so uh, he broke out for my friend Emily and I. He gave us some steel and we were trying to, we were bending it and you know, we're noobs to it, so it was fun. And then uh, the Couch Potato Brothers, they were like, hey, we got some stones. You know, you can name them if you – some of them have, like, not been claimed. Okay. So if you pick it up and walk with it to the stop sign and back, then you get to name it. So uh, I named one Wilma. <laughs> nice. Oh, and then I did um, – and I did their – Golden potato uh, pull-ups. I got the new record pull-ups. I think I did fifteen. I think, but um, nice. But I was so tired after all that. <laughs> I slept so well that night. Yeah, but yeah, grippers. I bet they have grippers there. He, he's they're really into grippers, right? Yes, because I I don't know if it's Adam or Frank. He recently certified on the Mash Monster ladder, so he's really into grippers. Yes. Okay, and I'll give it a try. Yeah. Yes, and and actually, since you mentioned them, I I always wanted to to do like a a crossover with them. I want to interview them in the future, like in the in the next season, yeah. because I think uh, I I had like two sources for sources of inspiration. It was their interviews and this week in grip from Jet Johnson, the podcast that I mentioned you in the past. And he mm -hmm. had many, many guests, like, I don't know. Well, he interviewed Sarah first. So actually, I heard all the podcasts of Sarah to get some inspiration and know a little yeah. more about her. Right, right. I listened to that, too. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I'm a podcast junkie as well. So, <laughs> yeah. It's really good. Can There's you tell a... me about what what do you like about grippers? Like, why, what's the appeal, like, Compared to other grip implements, is it is yeah. this pure like squeeze? You know, is that what you love about it? Or I think I think the uh, what I love about grippers is that when I first started, I was like, uh, yeah, I suck at at this. I don't like it. I tried like the heavy grip two hundred and fifty. It's like um, I don't know, like a pretty. It's not a gripper that everyone closes closes at the first time, and I was like, "Oh, this is super hard." 
And then two or three years passed and I went into powerlifting, into calisthenics, and then I could close it really easily. Boom. And it was like, oh, oh cool. some, something changed here. And I began to like go deeper and deeper into it. Uh, I went to the South American Championship and then Bruno brought me like the Iron Man grippers and he was like, hey, if you can close like the number two at the first time, uh, maybe you are like uh, good for this. And I tried to close the number two with the credit card and I almost did it. And I was like, oh, maybe I can do good at this. And when right. I started doing grip sport, I was like, oh, yeah, the grippers. And I really liked it for like from the first time. And since it's like really non-intuitive, a, a lot of technique involved and not depending on how big you are, like it, it depends on how big your hand is, but not on if you are like muscular or if you lift like 400 kilos on squat. I was like, May yeah, maybe I can do this. And since I am fairly good at English, I can gather some information, read some book, uh, ask any grip person on Instagram. And I started getting more mm -hmm. into it, more into it, more into it. And then I figured out like the that page called Canon Power Works, where you can buy your rated grippers. And I bought one, like the number three. And it was like, oh, maybe someday I will close it. And nowadays I have a coach. He's from England. His name is Sam Salomi. Fat Muscle Coaching is his Instagram. Okay. And I started uh, training with him and my level was like pfft, skyrocket. And uh, now I can so cool. do like I can do like 40 reps with my number three, like the first oh, wow. one I got. So these days I am like same. I, I can go to the number four, maybe. So I am really into it. That's super cool. I've I've heard it's hard on the, the central nervous system. Grippers. Oh Might yes. Grippers. Yeah. This is going to be like counterintuitive, but grippers are really frustrating. Really frustrating. Yeah. Maybe you have like a, a day that you didn't sleep really well, but you may do good on rolling handle, the Saxon. A pinch or half, but on grippers, if you have like a bad night's sleep, grippers are going to the trash. It's like, oh, okay, one day you're like closing really heavy grippers, and the other you you don't have enough yeah. level to close what you did the day before. So it's like really demanding. You have to like do it really often and never stop doing it, but. For me, at least, it's really hard to mix it with uh, all the lifts. So these days, I am really into the bluff and the grippers. Uh, and I I know that if I stop right now doing the grippers, I will lose like the level that I accomplished. So I am like, yeah, this year I'm going to maybe close my heaviest, uh, which is like a 3.5. And after that, 3.5. Maybe I will switch my focus to something else, but uh, they are like, I don't know. And the other, the second factor that makes me really hooked and really geeky into grippers, it's that I am like the first guy in Chile, like uh, opening the road to everyone else. Uh, right. I I've got injured. I got my first certifications. I have met all the grip guys of New York. Um, I am doing this interview with all of my. A tremendous guest, really honorable guest. So, one of my missions is like to clear the path for everyone. In example, there has been really new people that uh, touch the grippers because of me, and I have uh, all the experience to share. Like, uh, I think if I coach it, someone, uh, I may in six months uh, have them closing the number three, maybe. Okay. But yeah, th that's what they make yeah. me like really nerdy into grippers. Yeah, man, you would have some good clientele. I feel like a grip is such good. Uh, oh, it's just it's great for a lot of different athletes. Um, like like golf, right? I was thinking about my mom. She's a really good golfer. Okay. Like she's I don't know. She's oh I, I'm forgetting her age. 
sorry mom uh <laughs> probably doesn't want me to say it anyways but um she's a freaking good golfer but i'm like oh i should get her in the grip a little bit you know just because in baseball right like like anything that you hold implements right you yes i feel like that gripper would help out big time but i don't know yes but actually <laughs> since... <do> already <laughs> yes yeah but since the equipment is pretty expensive, I may I mean, I can afford that and I like to afford that. But for any anyone in Chile, it's really expensive. Actually, uh, each gripper, the the shipping costs more like more than the gripper. So it's like, are you crazy? But I am bringing all the equipment here so many people can touch it. That's my mission yeah. right now. I want people to come and touch it and uh, try it for the first time. So, well, actually, I am uh, building a store where where I build equipment. Uh, it's like a under construction, so there I can like provide a service. But uh, I want people to try, it, and it's really fun. Super cool. I, 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 I get super, super tired after those trainings because everyone wants like information from me and I am really hyped. I, I am like hey, explaining everything, uh, every certification and how to close it. But after six yeah. hours of training and laughing, it's like you get really tired, <laughs> but it's really fun yeah. <laughs> and I will keep doing it. Awesome. That's so cool. Well, that's, that's great. You're spreading the love. <laughs> Exactly. Well, yeah. getting back to, to the second question of Ben, <laughs> he wanted to know, uh, are you considering attending Heavy Hands? Oh, I've heard about that one. It's coming up, right? The heavy yes, hands? in September. Yes. Yeah. September's a hard month. It's harvest for us. Um, it's, it's hard because like, it's also when the weather is getting nice and cool for climbing yes. too. And like all yeah. our friends are going out climbing and it's just, it's just we're like literally hands deep in grapes. <laughs> um, so yeah, September, October, um, basically right before Thanksgiving, it's hard to plan much. I mean, any big trips for yeah, especially with kids now. I don't know. It's just oh, I would love to go to like every grip competition in in the planet because <laughs> it's just so I'm fun and everybody's awesome. So. I'm not aware like of the US map, but is Idaho I... near to Virginia? Because no, this contest is like... in, in Virginia. Nah, we're we're over by the kind of closer to the couch potato brothers, like you know, Oregon. They're on the other side of the yeah, of the US. <laughs> it's a pretty far um it would take an all day, you know, to get there type of thing. But maybe someday, yeah. Maybe I'll I, bring the girls with me. <laughs> I think I think they are because we, we always speak with uh, with Ben. I think they are planning to make next year like an online version. Like you you can have your own venue at home. So maybe well, if they do, I will have my own venue here in Chile. I hope. So maybe yeah. next year. Super cool. Yeah, yeah. I love that style because it just. You know, it opens it up for more people who can't travel as easily or, you know, it's just makes it more available, especially to uh, maybe more noobs, right? New new grippers that don't want, want to quite make that commitment to travel, but they can test out the ropes. Um, I hosted the Super Series this year at my dojo here <laughs> and not a huge turnout, but it was my first time hosting a competition. So I, I was kind of okay with that just to test it out and see how it went, you know, cause it takes time when you have a big group, it takes a long time to get through everybody. Um, and it was really hot, you know, it's summertime here. So it's like near a hundred degrees and my garage just, it just soaks the heat in. So like by the end of the super series, what, like a, two weeks ago I hosted, it was like 86 degrees in my garage, <laughs> which, you know, on the Saxon bar, it's like, I have sweaty hands, so greasy. But anyways, yeah, those competition, that style of competition is really nice. It's more accessible for everybody. Um, it's harder to judge and maybe the implements vary, but 
whatever. It's not like we're competing for like $1 million or, you know, it's just, it's gamifying things. It's for fun, right? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Jumping into the next questions. We have questions from Jen Tivenham. Hey, my girl. <laughs> so the first question from Jen. I feel, I feel pain <laughs> like she's slapping me right now. <laughs> she is a slapper. And it's awesome. Uh, it's like a good, good kind of slap. <laughs> a friendly. Friendly yes. slap. It gets things going. She's, she brings the hype to the competitions. Excellent. Yeah. She wants to know, uh, which is harder, preparing for grip sport or for climbing? Ooh, well, depends on like I, I guess preparing for like a like a solid day of like competition. I wonder if she's climbing is pretty complex. Like I've been climbing since I was you know fifteen years old, and I still feel like I'm almost new to it i'm learning such new things still every day that i climb um i just feel like there's a lot of technical um variability to rock climbing you know you're using your whole body you're using your feet your your eye gaze even you know the, the way you look at the hold before you go to it um your your heart rate right like just depends on what you're climbing like if you're about to do a really hard move the way you breathe versus if you're doing endurance like many moves you want to keep your breath pretty even even kill you know so um i think it's i, mean, I don't know it's they're different and both are as complex as you want it to be um i kind of that's what i like about grip is i don't make it overly complex uh, I've only been doing like you know the grip sport competitions for one year so I'm still I'm still just learning so much about like the Saxon bar I go kind of sumo but then I see people really going like narrow with their hands and there's some days where that re feels really good but overall I go a little bit further with semi sumo stance um, but shoot maybe in one year I'll be like super conventional on it you know just how things change over time um kind of same with the axle i feel like I, I go a little bit more sumo what do you do on the the axle i i do conventional always conventional yeah yeah i go a little sumo -y and yeah but yeah both are complex to train for i think it's just kind of what you want it to be um the grip i just like to follow eve's programming for me and not overthink things when I didn't have a program I was just too in my head about like oh what do I train like I thought I, too much about what to do and so that's why I needed a coach and you know some schedule and let my brain kind of just relax and get out of my brain a little bit and not have to think so much and just move the body right like just let your hands do what they cave woman right <laughs> lift heavy things with hands but climbing, I like it's complex. That's, yeah, so kind of a long-winded answer. Sorry. <laughs> oh, it's perfect. Another question from Jen. Where would you be? No. Where would be your favorite place to compete? Ooh. Um, let's see. Well, I've kind of learned that, like, I, I kind of like my grip competitions not to be combined with climbing. I have a hard time doing both, right, at the same time. So I imagine, like, a grip comp would be, mm, like, somewhere in the forest would be rad. <laughs> like, outside. Would that be fun? On a nice day, not too hot, right? You don't want sweaty hands, um, but not snow. <laughs> somewhere pretty. Uh, let's see. Maybe it could be, like, scavenger hunt style. And you got to go pick up random things like and then at the end we all get together and have like a big feast <laughs> and then you that can play the great. guitar and melody sounds can great. sing like melody could do some some screamo metal you know <laughs> <laughs> i don't know it's just anywhere where there's good people heavy shit to lift 
good times, pretty scenery. Um, I'd be down to go wherever that is. <laughs> yeah, Excellent. that's kind of vague, but yeah. <laughs> also, Jen wants to know, what's your go-to pre-comp meal? Meal? Meal, mm. yes. Okay. I get, you know, I still get nervous for competitions. So, like, if and if I get any food down, that's great. <laughs> Just kidding, but but not really. Um, like at the Arnold's. Um, oh, we got up so early, and I don't have like a huge appetite that early in the morning, you know. So, we went down to the the lobby, and they had their continental breakfast, and so it's just. Just eggs and sausage. I like to get some protein. Protein, basically. Eggs, meat, some fruit, maybe. Um, definitely coffee. Yeah. What about you? Do you have uh, a I think uh, I'd rather be, like, highly hydrated. So I like to uh -huh. have fruits. I like to have uh, plenty of water. I like to have, like, uh, bread. We eat a lot of yeah. bread here in Chile. And nice. and after like my my stomach is like full, I go for the coffee, like one, two or three cups of coffee. I re I'm really into coffee, so I like to okay. have many cups. And in between the tournament, um, Gatorade. Yes, I I am just recalling what I eat when I competed on Skillet Hands uh, last year. Right. And Alex has had all of that on her house for us. It was really a, a great host. We oh, have awesome. the coffee, the Gatorade. It was really great. Really great. And after the competition, there were like, I can't count how many pizzas and brownies we <laughs> we eat. It was really fantastic. <laughs> oh, heck yeah. You earned it, right? <laughs> I like pizza and brownies too. Really tasty. <laughs> So Jen wants to, uh, she also wants to know uh, if there's any free competition rituals. You know, I don't really have anything. I've learned like with these group competitions that they last kind of a long time, you know? So yes. I just try to keep it kind of a calm head. Just, yeah. If I get too amped up, um, I'm done, right? Like by the time... <laughs> after event one. <laughs> so, um, and that's kind of what I did when I had like Ninja Warrior, right? And there's like cameras on you and it's, it can be a nerve wracking situation that, you know, almost cripples you. Like it makes your body seize up. And so you have to stay just relaxed and just remember to breathe like big inhale, exhale. Um, Yeah, I don't have any rituals or anything, you know, like warming up and stretching and maybe rolling around on a foam roller and just moving the body a bit. But yeah, nothing, nothing crazy. Sorry. <laughs> oh, that's yeah. perfect. And there's another question. I mean, now we jump into the questions from Sarah Chapello. She was really happy with your questions <laughs> last week. So oh, yeah. after she knew Uh, you were my next guest. She said, "Like, oh, now it's my turn to uh -oh. <laughs> make some questions." <laughs> uh oh, <laughs> Sarah. Be nice. So, the first one, <laughs> Sarah wants to know: uh, Do you do anything special to take care of your hands? Also, is hand care for grip any different from hand care for climbing? Hmm. Um, so I, I have really sweaty hands. Like I'll be watching, I like to watch uh, the women's, well, men and women's, but uh, the bouldering world cup. And, you know, during finals, I'll be watching like Brooke Rabatou or one of the American females and nervous for them. And I look down and I'll have like a puddle in my, <laughs> it's gross. Like that's how much my hands sweat. So um, I do use like when we're in bouldering season, it's called Rhino Solutions. It's, it's a brand. It's like a cream. And I can't remember the name of the, like the compound, but it, it dries your hands up over the course of, you know, a week or two weeks. Depends on how much you use. But yeah, I feel like it really works. 
um, antihydral, right? Is that, I think that's, yeah, antihydral. Could be wrong, but yeah. So I use that. Um, I just cut my nails short. <laughs> uh, let's see. Well, for grip, you're not allowed to use like tape, right? But in climbing, I do use tape if I know I'm working like a bouldering problem that has like a really sharp hold. Um, I try to prevent tearing open the skin, so I'll, I'll wrap a little tape around it. Um, when I was doing Ninja Warrior, you're often flying from like a big a bar to a bar, and you tend to get a lot of uh, flappers like in your calluses right here. Yes. Like bad, <laughs> where it rips up. And so before I would like fingernail clip these off and then shave it down so there's like nothing there. But I'm not doing that anymore. So <laughs> yeah, as far as grip, like, no, even for like the plastic material, uh, you know, the rolling handles, the Country Crush brand. Yes. It's kind of slick. Yeah, I'll like a little spit <laughs> instead of chalk or even a, like a combo, a little chalk and a little spit. And it feels real good um, for me. <laughs> But it's kind of cool because in the climbing world, like in the World Cup this year, they had holds on the wall that were made of plastic, like a resin. Yes. Similar material to like the the slick plastic handles in the blocks. Um, yes. And, and climbers, you know, they're used to just bringing out their chalk bags and chalking up for everything. But the chalk like makes it worse, I think, on on that kind of material. And so... One of the competitors brought out a little water bottle and, you know, got the, got his hands wet and, like, did real good on those holds that were super slick. So, yeah, it's kind of interesting that's kind of crossing over a little bit, you know, the materials and what chalk goes well with and water and, yeah. Perfect. Yeah. That's kind of related with the next question of Sarah. She wants to know what kind of chalk do you use for grip lift? And if do you have any tips for success for chalking hands? Oh, um, let's see. There's a brand called Frank Endo Chalk. And okay. we have like we have here, I'll just turn the you see that big cardboard box right there? Yes. That's That's like all blocks of chalk. <laughs> nice. So we just get it like super bulk. Um, brings the price down. It's nothing that special, but it's it's pretty good. Um, and for grip, you know, like for the hub and stuff, just make sure to get the inside real good. Just get it all over. <laughs> like <laughs> chalk everywhere. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. Well, you know, when I went to the my first big competition at uh, the Olympia last year. Yes. I think I was the only one that brought like a brush to clean off like the Saxon bar. That thing gets super caked up with chalk. Everybody just, you know, <laughs> just grabbing it, grabbing it. Um, and so I think that really helps to bring like a little horsehair brush. Um, I have a little... This guy right here. Perfect, like like the one that you use, like a, with the bouldering of the every yeah. piece. Yep, yeah, yeah. And I don't know what I was thinking for the Arnold's. I forgot to bring it, and I think I really do think it affected my performance a little bit because I just I normally just brush the caked chalk off, and I don't know. I I didn't do great on the Saxon this year, um, but it was a different brand Saxon bar, so. I think it's a little bit harder. The arm assassin, it's just different, okay. you know, the way it's weighted versus the Sorenex Saxon bar. So, yeah. So, yeah, Sorry. more brushes, like brush those hubs off. Brush <laughs> the Anything black and metal, yeah, that takes chalk. You'd be surprised, like, how much it helps. Nice. <laughs> Well, Sarah had like a similar similar question to to Jen. Uh, she wanted to know if you have any pre-contest rituals to get you in the zone. So if you don't have like pre-contest rituals, how do you get into the zone before oh, competing? Into the zone. 
Yes. Oh, um, at home, I actually, I don't listen to music. I used to be all super psyched on music while I was working out or, you know, like really trying to get in the zone. I relied a lot on music. But ever since I had kids, there's something about like, I think it's my central nervous system <laughs> yeah. that gets tired over the day with, you know, just the stress of life and kids and everything. So for me, I prefer to work out with no music, um, maybe a little background music. And there's days where I'll throw on some, some you know, hip hop or some Beastie Boys, <laughs> something, you know, but overall, like I'll go to the YMCA, the local gym and I don't have earbuds. I just, for me, I try not to rely too much on outside resources to provide the psych. I, I just, I have it in here, you know, it's, it's in me. <laughs> um, Perfect. I think having the certain people around really helps like, um, psyched at the Vegas Olympia. They were just very motivating, um, encouraging. Everybody was, all the ladies were just happy to be there and like encouraging each other. Yeah. Melissa and Grace and just everybody, Jess and yeah, everybody from Spokane and <laughs> yeah, it was, it was a good time. So I think the environment that you're in, you kind of feed off of each other. So. Yeah. Perfect. And the last question from Sarah, what group accomplishment are you most proud of? Um, one of the coolest moments was um, at the Olympia last year on the axle bar. Um, I got a big PR on that to 264. So I was super psyched on that. Um, yeah, as far as grip. Yeah, I think that's, I don't know. The Saxons kind of been a little up and down. Yes. Just, <clears throat> that's a hard one that I feel like get big jumps on for me. I've kind of leveled out. Yeah. But the handle, I, I had a big PR on the rolling handle at the Arnold's. So that was pretty, that was exciting. Um, but yeah, I think the axle at the Olympia was just rad just to lift that much weight up, you know? <laughs> nice. Yeah. Well, Tammy, I want to thank you for your time. We had a really nice interview and I had a lot of fun talking to you. So uh, I want to I want to especially thank you because I will never forget when we were chatting and you told me that you wanted to see more females on Grips for Latinos. So I, I'm really happy to have you here. I'm really happy <laughs> that I could have Hara, Sarah last week. And I hope yeah. that in the next season, after I get married, I will uh, do another season. Uh, I hope to invite more women and to have more women in Chile as well, competing and being inspired inspired by uh, strong ladies like Sarah and you and all the USA armlifting team, which are really powerful. And I am sure you will set really big records in the future. Mm -hmm. I appreciate it. And... Um... I wish you the best wedding ever and yeah. to your sweetie of how many years? 14 like, years. Oh, 14 <laughs> years. Yeah, that's so cool. Um, I appreciate your your podcast channel because I'm a, I'm a podcast nerd. Like that's what I throw on in the car and while I'm doing laundry. Yeah, <laughs> I just love grip podcasts like yep, you and Ricardo and Zach and Yeah, I've listened to some older ones too um, out there, but I just appreciate because uh, I know it takes a lot of effort and time. You know, here yes. we are. What time is it for you right now? <laughs> It's like like the 12 p.m. We are about to the, the broadcast is about to to die, Tammy. So I want to okay. thank you. I don't want to cut well, you, but yeah. I want to thank you and see you later. 